A couple of months ago, as election cycles were winding down and COVID numbers were rising, vaccines were simultaneously being announced and we were all getting ready to head back into lockdown. Something absolutely wonderful came my way. It came in the form of a news report that I stumbled upon during my regular checkups of the stories of the world. The story went something like this. Earlier that morning, the FBI had made a move to arrest Matthew Piercy, a 44-year-old California man who is a part of a $35 million Ponzi scheme involving getting people to invest in his companies while he actually used most of the money for himself. Now, sadly, this in itself is not too far out of the ordinary, and since the beginning, some people have been trying to cheat other people out of what they have for their own personal gain. But how this story went down is what really jumped out to me. See, when the FBI agents went to arrest Mr. Piercy, he jumped into his truck and he took off, leading the agents on a wild chase. Now, eventually, a Piercy arrived at the shores of Lake Shasta, a good-sized lake and reservoir in California, and as soon as he arrived, he immediately jumped out of his pickup, abandoned it, but not before pulling something strange out of the back and then leaping into the cold water. Now it turns out, Piercy had been keeping in the back of his truck something called a sea scooter, which is basically a little handheld motor that you hold out in front of you when you're swimming. It's typically for snorkeling, although depending on the movies that you watch, it can also be pretty handy for underwater battles between British secret agents and the henchmen of dastardly villains uh, bent on world domination. So anyway, off he went into the deep blue, uh, satisfied that he had made the perfect escape. And he might have, except for one small overlooked detail. See, even though Piercy himself completely disappeared underwater, either his sea scooter or his breathing system produced a small trail of bubbles, which the law enforcement officers observed casually as he tried to make his great escape down the lake. Now, I imagine he thought he was doing pretty good. Cruising along underwater at four miles an hour, he probably assumed he would really pulled a fast one on the authorities, and I imagine he was beginning to scheme out the next step in his life on the run. But after about 25 minutes of his daring underwater escape, Piercy came back up to the surface, only, disappointingly, to be greeted by the FBI agents waiting patiently to arrest him. It was almost perfect, but the story really perfected my day. See, even though I've never tried to outrun the FBI with the sea scooter, I actually felt like this is my story a lot of the time. And maybe you felt that way too. Have you ever tried to do life on your own? Uh, even those of us who are Christian, we're not immune to that. And it seems like so often, even though we say that we trust God, when things do get hard, we actually, we seem to prefer to struggle through the challenges, to come up with our own solutions, to face the problems head on and to fight and fight and fight. Or sometimes when it becomes all too much, we try to hide ourselves or to run away. But did you know that there's another way? You don't actually have to struggle. I'm reminded of Psalm 139, and in it, David writes, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit. You know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, 
for darkness is as light to you. Now I hope that when I said this, you had these two stories simultaneously playing together in your head. The story of the great escape on one side, combined with the story of God's eternal and far-reaching love for us. Because our story, it often goes the same way. I mean, here we are pretty early on in 2021. Uh, We've survived a pretty wild year, God willing, mostly unscathed. And yet, all of a sudden, life rears its ugly head. You know, maybe you lose your job. Maybe your marriage begins to fall apart. Maybe in the stress, old addictions begin to flare up. Maybe you find yourself beginning to walk down some of those dangerous old paths that you used to wander. Whatever it is, life calls your number and you come up empty, so you try to take care of it yourself. Maybe you piece together your old resume and hand it into every listing in town. Maybe you and your spouse enroll in marriage counseling. Maybe you try and take those habits and quit them cold turkey again. Maybe you take stock of the paths that you're walking and you realize what you've known all along. That you're walking paths to nowhere. And so you try to find some new ones. Maybe you run away. Maybe you build some walls. But as you go, maybe you begin to believe the lie that your problems are too small for God to worry about. Or maybe you believe the lie that you're too far gone. You know, Satan loves to lie. The Bible says he's the father of lies. Have you ever noticed that happening before? Maybe you believe that a loving God would never get you in a mess like this. Or maybe you don't even know what to believe at all. It's kind of like one of my students said the other day at school. Uh, You're like a super naughty bad bad. He's trying to become a super goody good good but you're trying to become a super goody good good by your own power, so the best you can possibly become is a super goody bad good. Uh, In reality, what you need to do is to let go, to, to give it up, and to let God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us, by the power of the cross, those who are in Christ become a new creation. The old is dead, Behold, all things are new. What it would feel like to be new. That's the simple story, though, of how to be born again. It's the power of the cross, not the power of your own best efforts. Which sometimes feels like a treadmill on seven. Uh, a super naughty bad bad can't become a super goody good good by their own power. It can't happen. The only way is to give up your control, give up your fears, give up yourself, give up your entire world, and give them all, trust them all to Jesus. That's how a super naughty bad bad is born again into a super goody good good. And it's by grace that you've been saved through faith and this not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2. The thing is, as you're fighting to do the thing that you think you should be doing, you don't realize that on the surface, God is right there and He cares. And I guess this is where your story, where our story is different from Matthew Piercy's. See, while he tried to make his great escape, the FBI agents were calmly watching the bubbles go down the lake as they waited for him to come up to the surface so they could arrest him and take him to his well-deserved justice. But in your story, God is watching you go down the lake, not so he can arrest you and take you to justice, though we probably deserve it. But our sentence has already been served by Jesus. Instead, he's watching so that the second that you come up and cry for help, he can be right where you are. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. 
your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely darkness will be dark around me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. For the night will shine like the day. Uh, for darkness is as light to you. Isn't that good that darkness is as light to God? It doesn't matter how far you've fallen. It doesn't matter how deep that water is around you. It doesn't matter how many twists and turns you've taken as you ride out your great escape. See, God is there. And He's not there to arrest you. He's there to hold you. He's there to walk with you and to guide you on the paths of heaven. It's true. It may seem strange that after all you've been through that nobody's there to bring you in. But the fact is, somebody's already paid the ultimate price for what you've done. Romans 5, 6 through 8, I love this. It says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though, for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Wow, while we were still sinners, what a relief. And there's good old John 3.16. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. See, not only is God waiting for you in the exact place where you're at, He's watching your bubbles and He's right there with you. He's deeply invested in you. I love this insight from the book Christ's Object Lessons. It says, in the parable, the shepherd goes out to search for one sheep. One is the very least that can be numbered. So, if there had been but one lost soul, Christ would have died for that one. Isn't that amazing? You matter to God. So if you're looking up the cross and you are searching for the reason why, might I offer this simple explanation from Psalm 139, the place where it all began for me. Here's the highlights. You should know them by now. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I hide from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you, and the night will shine like the day. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. See, that's the reason right there. Jesus created you with great care. He made you just like you are for a reason, for a purpose. And He'll redeem you from wherever you are just as soon as you're ready to let yourself be redeemed. So my, my plea for you today is this. Don't keep swimming. Don't keep on running away. Come up for air today. Jesus is waiting for you. He loves you. And He's waiting to place your feet on higher ground today. Mm -hmm.